live and we have to really escalate the noise we make so that we'll be heard. Welcome to Gay USA. I'm Andy Hum. I'm Ann Northrup. And this week, of course, we're looking at these uh, uh, trial verdicts, Ahmed Arbery, uh, Kyle Rittenhouse, everything else. Uh, but we're also looking at great news about the case of the florist who denied to a gay couple for their wedding. And she has dropped her appeal to the Supreme Court and settled with the couple. Uh, President Biden has nominated yet another out lesbian judge appeals bench, and he reversed some more anti-LGBTQ Trump policies. The head of the Republican National Committee, Ronna McDaniel, you know her, apologized to her uh, minions for doing outreach to LGBTQ voters. I think she's their minion. Uh, and anti-gay bigots are howling that Virginia's uh, go Republican governor-elect Youngkin has a gay staffer. <laughs> My God. Uh, we mourn the loss this week of veteran gay and ACT UP activist Scott Robbie and America's first out trans mayor, Stu Rasmussen. Catholic Seventh graders in Baltimore have stood up to an anti-LGBTQ priest. Let the children lead them. Chile's legislature has voted for marriage equality, but Thailand's high court says banning it is constitutional. The world's top race car driver has stood up for LGBTQ rights in Saudi Arabia and Qatar. Very inspiring. World AIDS Day is December 1st. We're marking 40 years of the epidemic. And by the way, I will tell it, tell it to you right away. You can find a World AIDS Day event near you by going to worldaidsday.org backslash events. And there, we're going to have updates on Dancing with the Stars, Jesse Smollett, uh, Smollett uh, Eddie Redmayne, and Dave Chappelle. The packed uh, show. Now, right. before we just get started, we want to thank you for being with us on part of your holiday weekend. We appreciate that. And if you appreciate us, uh, we're making our annual appeal. Uh, if you go to GayUSATV.org, there's a way you can make a donation to Gay USA uh, to keep us going after all these years, 36 years. <laughs> Ann and I celebrating our 25th anniversary together. Yes. Oh, and before that, in other jobs, but yes, uh, 25 true. years together at Gay USA and an extra 10 or 11 for yeah. Andy here at Gay USA. Uh, so, yeah, uh, we're old, but we're uh, soldiering on. So we'd love your support. Every little bit helps. Now, you know, this was the week of the of the verdicts. Uh, as we come on the air, we're just very relieved uh, that in the Ahmad Arbery case, there was accountability. Uh, there was conviction on on most counts there uh, as someone as one of the commentators said it's not justice justice would be if ahmad was still with us and i'm sure this is not the le last we'll hear of these cases i'm sure there will be appeals also evidently there are going to be federal prosecutions for hate crimes violations so this is going to go on for a while, but it is an enormous relief to hear these guilty verdicts read out as we tape on Wednesday afternoon. And people wonder why we're so upset about the Kyle Rittenhouse uh, verdict, who, who was uh, uh, acquitted. He was a 17-year-old kid who injected himself into a fraught demonstration with an assault rifle and took two lives and grievously injured another. But now he's going to walk free. There's no, certainly no justice there. I would contrast that with the case I covered a couple of years ago, and we talked a lot about it on the show, Abel Cedeno, 
a 17-year-old gay Puerto Rican teen who was bullied in school relentlessly for six years, was trying to defend himself from yet another assault by two classmates who were pummeling him mercilessly. So he held up a knife to ward them off and he ended up stabbing them, one dying, the other injured. The Bronx judge there had zero sympathy for his right to self-defense and sentenced him to 14 years in prison, which he is serving upstate. Terrible. Uh, so, you know, justice, a mixed bag, uh, but we are hoping for better as uh, we try to improve the courts. We have another out lesbian, Allison Nathan, nominated by President Biden to a district court, uh, to the uh, Second Circuit Court of Appeals. That will make two lesbians on the Second Circuit Court of Appeals. It's, it's about become, time. It's a clubhouse. Uh, she is currently a district court judge. Uh, she is currently presiding in the Ghislaine Maxwell case here in New York City. Uh, and she has said that will not interfere with her nomination. She will continue to preside in this case. She uh, is the associate White House counsel to President Obama, uh, who made her a district judge. She's married to NYU law professor Meg uh, Satterwhite and they are parents to twin sons. So congratulations to Allison and to uh, her presumed benchmate, who uh, Beth Robinson, was that uh, who it was, who was nominated recently, yeah. confirmed recently. So that'll be uh, nice for the Second Circuit Court of Appeals. Uh, President Biden also under the Build Back Better uh, bill, uh, uh, LGBT couples legally married before federal marriage equality will be eligible for retroactive tax refunds. Uh, Same-sex couples started marrying in 2004 in Massachusetts. The Windsor decision was 2013, and the federal government let same-sex couples go back three years if they were legally married uh, to recoup some taxes if they were uh, open to them. Couples with similar incomes will benefit much, but if they made substantially different amounts, the benefit could be substantial. So call Joe Manchin and uh, Kirsten Sinema. Yeah, if you were uh, if you were married, legally married before 2010 under this, uh, you can get some tax returns. Uh, the Department of Health and Human Services is also rescinding uh, Trump's quote, overly broad, unquote, uh, blanket waivers of non-discrimination rules for religious exemptions. Uh, they're going to revert to a case-by-case -case basis to decide any claims of religious exemptions from their non-discrimination rules. Uh, Lambda Legal and others say, well, this is certainly an improvement, but not good enough because we shouldn't be funding religious organizations to do the government's child welfare work. Well, Obama granted a lot of waivers, but HHS will rescind waivers that were granted to Texas, Michigan, and South Carolina that allowed agencies in those states to give federal funds to entities that claim religious exemptions as a pretext to discriminate versus marginalized communities. Well, there's an update in the uh, Philadelphia case of Catholic Social Services, the one where the Supreme Court said that, in fact, Philadelphia could not withhold funding from Catholic Social Services to do uh, foster care and adoption work uh, because they said the contract gave a, a theoretical out and said it would provide exemptions to some so from non-discrimination laws and therefore was not allowed to pick and choose uh, not funding Catholic Social Services. So Catholic Social Services won that case, much to our horror. Well, now the city of Philadelphia has settled with Catholic Social Services for $2 million in legal fees. Philadelphia is paying them and is renewing the contract with them because of, they lost this case. But for other, all other uh, contracts, Philadelphia has now removed the offending uh, weak clause from the contract that gave people some opportunity for religious exemption. So going forward, uh, Philadelphia may have plugged this hole, but Catholic Social Services is still working for the city to do foster care while discriminating against same-sex couples.
All right. Uh, briefly going out to Oregon, uh, the, uh, they, they have an out bisexual governor, Kate Brown. Uh, the out speaker of the House, Tina Hotek, a Democrat. Kotek. Kotek. Kotek, sorry, uh, is the front runner to succeed uh, Governor Brown, um, who, uh, who was, uh, could be a crowded primary, including New York Times columnist Nick Kristoff. Yes, Kotek has now officially filed. She was expected to run. She has uh, officially filed her papers. Kate Brown is uh, term limited out. She's not allowed to run uh, for re-election. All right, going back to court, we've told you about the Arlene's Flowers case. Uh, this woman, Baronel Stutzman, runs it. Well, she has dropped her Supreme Court case. She was trying to go back to the Supreme Court versus a gay couple um that she would not serve with her flower business that's uh, the, the couple is kurt freed and robert ingersoll who won their suit i think she was hoping she'd go back to this supreme court and get a better deal but she will pay the men five thousand bucks um she was represented by alliance defending freedom uh stutzman herself is retiring uh, she's handing over the business to her children or daughter or son or something. So there's no guarantee that they won't continue to fight this kind of thing. But yes, yeah, she has to pay the guys 5000 They're adding 5000 of their own and giving the whole 10000 to PFLAG. Uh, she had lost this case at every level and was convinced that it would not do her any good to go to the Supreme Court. So she dropped it. Okay. All right. And other national news, uh, Ronna McDaniel apologized to the Republican National Committee that she heads, uh, chairs, for an outreach program to LGBTQ voters. Uh, she assured them uh, that the Republican Party does not support LGBTQ rights. Uh, with the Log Cabin Club, she had announced an RNC Pride Coalition at Mar-a-Lago earlier this month. Tony Perkins of the Family Research Council called her to resign. Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene lambasted her and said, remember, the rainbow is God's sign. <laughs> McDaniel basically said she wants our votes, but promises not to do anything for them. She, I couldn't be happier to see this internal conflict in the Republican Party and further uh, demonstrated by what's happening in Virginia with the brand new uh, governor-elect. He hasn't even taken office yet, uh, Glenn Youngkin, and he's already in the midst of this battle with the uh, Republican stalwarts because he hired a, a gay man uh, to do his, what, communications? A press assistant, Joshua Marin yes. Mora, who uh, had served on the George Georgetown Latinx Leadership Forum. This was a clue to the right wing that he might not be okay. <laughs> and he and Youngkin has also said that he is not going to try to get rid of the vaccine mandates that uh, the previous governor has in place. And the right wing is furious at him for that. So uh, uh, trouble afoot in the Republican and Party. And then there's Montana State Senator Teresa Manzella, who accused us of wanting to recruit children and said that when we get beat up for holding hands, those are the normal consequences associated with the choices we make. This is an elected state representative in Montana. I, and uh, uh, quite common around the country, I'm sure. And then and there's, then there's uh, Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson of North Carolina, who is uh, expanding on his old tricks. Uh, he now says it challenged on his anti LGBT statements in the last few weeks. He now says LGBT people are useless non procreators who resemble who are like cow dung attracting maggots. Well, here's the first thing, Mark. <laughs> gay people, as I've said often on this show, are not sterile. And we do procreate and we do reproduce. We may have several alternate methods uh, and some traditional methods. Uh, as the heterosexual couples. <laughs> yes. So this business of we are useless non-procreators is particularly offensive uh, since it is Talk about anti-science, come on. And Andy says, I don't want to explain to my grandchildren why two men are kissing on TV. 
wait till he sees the Norwegian uh, Santa thing that we're going to show later. <laughs> yes. Uh, all right. Well, so, you know, anyway, he, he's, but he's, no, he says as an elected official, he'll protect our constitutional rights. But I wouldn't count on it. He's running for governor. All right, uh, let's get to some other news. In California, uh, at Netflix headquarters, active, trans activists uh, very cleverly uh, projected a trans day of remembrance on the front of the headquarters entrance there at Netflix in continuing protest over their refusal to, uh, to back down from Dave Chappelle's uh, special. And all those anti-trans bills in state legislatures this year, the Fenway Institute in Boston has a 30-page report on how these bills are obviously harming the health and well-being of trans youth. It's a re useful resource, which we will link to in our report. Uh, you could go to fenwayhealth.org and read it now. Meanwhile, the two trans employees at Netflix who were fired uh, supposedly for leaking company information or uh, charging into a meeting, have uh, settled their differences with Netflix and are going back to work. Uh, there is no any actual monetary settlement or anything is, is uh, private. We haven't got any details of that but they are back on campus at Netflix. And we mentioned uh, the Human Rights Campaign's 10th Annual Municipal Equality Index last week. 22% uh, of the cities got perfect scores. We have the full link in our email, and you can go to hrc.org to read that. Um, uh, because, you know, anti-LGBT legislation is piling up in the red states. The cities are often doing better. But there are eight cities that scored zeros. Can I read them? Florence, Alabama, Jonesboro, Arkansas, South Haven, Mississippi, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, and more Oklahoma, Clemson, South Carolina, Pierre, South Dakota, and Rock Springs, Wyoming. Uh, President Biden uh, observed the Transgender Day of Remembrance by decrying anti-trans violence explicitly. And Representative Ayanna Presley of Massachusetts read the names of all the murdered uh, trans people this last year into the congressional record on the floor of the House of Representatives, uh, which was quite moving. Uh, Biden also signed an executive order for uh, non-discrimination against uh, indigenous Native Americans uh, that explicitly mentioned two-spirit people uh, as part of that. And did did we know that Interior Secretary Deb Holland has a lesbian daughter? I think I think so. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was all. She was part of the uh, the uh, Native uh, Executive Order so and, ceremony. And this has been the most murderous year on record uh, that we know of for uh, trans folks and non-binary folks, especially a black trans woman, and yet another one was murdered in Ambridge, Pennsylvania, uh, Angel Neira, 36 years old. Yeah, terrible. Uh, also, uh, protests uh, closed down a trans youth clinic in Texas. Uh, 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 you know, the right wing was protesting it, and so they closed it down because it just seemed too dangerous for people going in and out of a, an overtly labeled trans clinic uh, for youth. But uh, activists there think that uh, trans youth will actually be better served in not so overtly labeled uh, clinics inside hospitals or right. regular medical well, facilities. The hospitals that ran it together, uh, Children's Medical Center Dallas and UT uh, Southwestern Medical Center, uh, they, they say that they're going to keep receiving treatment uh, through other departments, but that this was the best way to protect them. But doctors will no longer initiate uh, patients on hormone or puberty suppression. So that's a problem. Yes, it is. And in Austin, Texas, uh, uh, pro activists uh, drove around Austin, around the state capitol with this truck with a sign saying trans lives are precious, uh, 
in protest of all these uh, right wingers who are trying to shut down services for trans youth. Uh, can we talk about some of the people that we lost, other people that we lost this week? Sure. Uh, starting with veteran gay progressive and AIDS activist Scott Robbie, who died at 66 from complications of a blood cancer. He was your uh, comrade in ACT UP. And why don't you tell us about him? Well, he participated in, in some of the more provocative uh, actions of ACT UP, uh, 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 invading the floor of the New York Stock Exchange and uh, invading the headquarters of Burroughs Welcome in North Carolina. Uh, Peter Staley was quoted as saying he just never hesitated and was never intimidated by any possibility of arrest or anything. And they were arrested in those demonstrations. Right. But he would just say, I'm in, I'm going in. And he, he did all that and uh, was a complete sweetheart. But he went on from that to uh, uh, co-found an organization called Out in Film in Hollywood because uh, he actually was a writer and producer of film and theater and TV. And he led the protest at the Oscars 30 years ago in 1991. Uh, as the ceremony was going on, there were activists outside uh, with signs and a demonstration about homophobia in film and TV. And, you know, we're so everywhere in all of that these days. It's maybe a little hard to imagine, but 30 years ago, we were very upset that we were nowhere in any of that. And Wasn't that related to Silence of the Lambs uh, or, or around that? That was, one of the, that was one of the issues. Um, anyway, uh, he fought for equity. You know, he started out in the East Village uh, in 78 to 84 in off off Broadway theater, including at La Mama, where he workshopped Fugue in a Nursery, which became part of Harvey Firestein's Torch Song trilogy. And he pr helped produce Harvey's Safe Sex on Broadway. Um, he was diagnosed with HIV in 1990. His TV credits included Out There, an LGBTQ comedy special for Comedy Central in 1993, Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. Um, and then he went to work at the as the executive director of Film Wisconsin, bringing TV and film projects to his home state. Uh, there's going to be a celebration of his life broadcast online in 2022. He's survived by his mother and four siblings. And he was very out about his uh, illness and impending death and was writing publicly about it and talking to people as he was approaching the end. Uh, very sweet guy. And then America's first openly trans mayor has died, Stu Rasmussen of Silverton, Oregon, 73 years old, survived by uh, longtime love, Victoria. Uh, Stu was a lifelong resident of Silverton and served multiple terms as mayor, starting in 1988 and in 2008 as openly trans. When the Westboro Baptist Church came to protest Stu, many residents showed up in dresses demanding that they leave town. <laughs> uh, uh, Stu died of prostate cancer, uh, as you say, 73. Uh, Scott Robbie, 66. Yep. Uh, all too young, especially to those of us <laughs> in that age range who are finding that way too young. Yeah. All right. Uh, some uh, gonna get, oh, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say for those of us still around, uh, Palm Springs, which you may think of as a retirement community for the LGBT community, is actually building an actual retirement community for the <laughs> gay community uh, called Living Out Palm Springs. It's a, right now. It's a just lot a of these places. A lot of these LGBTQ housing facilities that are being built are for lower income people. Yes. This is not. <laughs> okay. All right, some school news. The Denton, Texas Public Library canceled its uh, periodic rainbow story time, uh, highlighting books for marginalized groups after threats from a Republican politician, uh, Don Huffines, who's no small potatoes. He's running in the primary for governor uh, in Texas versus Greg Abbott. Uh, it was set for uh, Transgender Day of Remembrance, but the library will now try to work to reschedule it due to the threats of violence. The library said it will not, it was not set to discuss gender identity or sexual orientation or involve drag queens, but was going to be a reading of books on self-acceptance. 
Huffines proclaimed himself pleased by the cancellation. Uh, the right wing are the primary practitioners of cancel culture. Yes, exactly. Nonetheless, the National Book Awards have uh, have honored uh, for young people's literature, young people's literature, a book called Last Night at the Telegraph Club by Melinda Lowe. Uh, she is the first out queer Asian American winner of the Young People's Literature National Book Award. This is about, this is set in the 1950s in San Francisco. It's about a Chinese teenage girl who is exploring her sexuality. And it is a big winner of a big award. All right, uh, then a, a victory in North Kansas City, Missouri School District. Uh, they have put uh, two books, LGBTQ books, back on the shelves. Fun Home by Alison Bechtel and All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson. Uh, I think that's right. Yeah. Um, after a warning from the ACLU, uh, the LGBTQ books were pulled when one parent objected at a school board meeting. The students petitioned to keep them back up and the ACLU followed through on that. Uh, uh, other school stories in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, a suburb of Milwaukee, parents and the Alliance Defending Freedom are suing a school because it recognized their child as trans. They don't want the school to recognize their child as trans, but the child was, uh, the school was happily using the child's preferred pronouns and name. And the parents said, uh, screw that, uh, we're suing you and we're taking our child out of your school and putting them in a mental health facility, <laughs> except that the mental health facility also recognize the child as trans and now the poor child is at home and now the parents are claiming that the child has renounced a trans identity and is back to uh, cis status and we're all sitting here thinking i don't think so uh, but we don't know the child but uh, this is a real mess but they're so the parents of the alliance defending freedom again exploiting the opportunity and suing the school in Milwaukee. Better news from Baltimore, where a 12-year-old at St. Francis of Assisi School was uh, forced by a priest to remove a rainbow shirt, we have a picture of what it's like, that she wore on Dress Down Friday. So on Sunday, uh, the following Sunday, several classmates wore rainbow fast face masks to mass. That's the priest, there's the face mask. Uh, carried rainbow flags and wore rainbow shirts that read, I am a child of God. An officiant at the service also wore a rainbow mask and prayed publicly for marginalized populations and gender identities. The archdiocese, nevertheless, said the imagery and language uh, had a message that could be determined uh, to oppose the teachings of the Catholic Church. Yes, indeed, they do oppose those teachings. Uh, and so I think it's fantastic that the kids uh, went into the church of the priest. They didn't protest at the I mean, maybe they did protest at the school, but they didn't confine it to that. They went to the priest's church to protest. Yeah. Fantastic. fantastic. Meanwhile, in Indiana, uh, an appeals court is reviving a uh, gay married teacher's lawsuit against the archdiocese there. This is the case where you have these two men who were married. They each taught in different schools, Catholic, Catholic schools. schools, and the archdiocese told the schools to fire these teachers because they are gay married. Well, one school did, went ahead and fired uh, their teacher. The other school refused to fire their teacher. The archdiocese then tried to excommunicate the whole school from Catholicism. Uh, uh, well, the school that kept the teacher uh, uh, w was run by the Jesuits, and they have a certain, they're not totally subject to the archdiocese. Well, they didn't give in, certainly, to that uh, attempt to... He's still there, I looked him up. Uh, but, uh, the, yes, he is. But the, uh, the married teacher who was fired tried to uh, uh, protest and sue against his firing and lost, but now the 
uh, appeals court in Indiana says that he can sue the archdiocese. They're reinstating his lawsuit. So we'll continue to follow that. And don't get your hopes up too much, but the, Cal <laughs> the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals by a two to one decision has ordered the release of the tapes from the Prop 8 trial in 2010. Uh, the losers' lawyers are, appeal are appealing, saying that Judge Vaughn Walker said that recording was just for him, not for the public. Well, he did say that. But the transcripts have been out and public ever since the trial. So if you. There was a dramatic reading of it on Broadway. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, you can access that anytime you want, but it would be nice to see the actual tapes because that was quite a dramatic trial where the right wing wouldn't show up because they were afraid of people uh, firebombing their houses or something. Uh, but when they, the ones who did show up were just humiliated on the stand because they were so wrong. In Honolulu, uh, yes. an LGBTQ nightclub, Scarlet Honolulu, uh, is suing the State Liquor Commission and the State Department of Commerce for discrimination and harassment, citing four investigators uh, who have targeted them, they say, for their unfounded violations. They want these people removed from, from their you know, inspections. Um, so, and they want- they, they keep coming back over and over and over again to do these uh, inspections. And, and they want the whole staff to be better trained. Look, I, I remember in New York where state liquor authority invest, investigators used to go into lesbian bars, men, and say, we want to be served. And they wouldn't be refused. They would, this was 1982. They would just be told, you know, it is a lesbian bar. You might be happier at uh, McSorley's down the street. Uh, but for this, on this basis, they closed two of them, and there aren't very many in those days, uh, or aren't very many now, but that's what happened. And there's a terrible story about uh, the Twitch service and something called swatting. Are you familiar with this? No. So, so Twitch is evidently a service where you can, you can run things and make money. And a lot of uh, trans people and drag queens are on this service running various gaming operations uh, uh, because the alternative is sex work and this is a place where they can uh, do this instead. Well, there are, there are trollers who go on there and get their information and then call the cops and submit false police reports that these uh, drag queens are are violent, uh, uh, dangerous people. And then the SWAT team show up at their houses with guns drawn uh, and, uh, you know, go after them. And uh, this has become a whole uh, thing that happens. So Twitch has been asked to... Uh, try to interfere with this, but how do you shut it down? Not easy. Well, those false reports are, are, can be murderous. Yes, exactly. Police can end up shooting people. Yeah. Well, and speaking of murderous and shooting, uh, we should congratulate Robbie Kaplan, who is the lead attorney in the Charlottesville case that was just won uh, awards of more than $25 million against the Proud Boys, the, uh, the essentially Both keepers yeah thank you oh, uh, well, rachel was going on and on last night i have to oh, oh, she's saying these are the gayest the, you know, <laughs> things of the you know she you know because they call themselves the proud boys yeah. well frankly i don't think that's funny but uh, that's just me okay do you find that amusing i just it's news well, not really. It's one woman's opinion. Okay. <laughs> but Robbie Kaplan's win is news, and uh, we applaud her for doing that. Yes, indeed. All right. Uh, international news. Well, uh, in Thailand, uh, uh, a trans Malaysian cosmetics entrepreneur, very prominent, Noor Sajat, 36, was arrested by Thai immigration authorities. Malaysian authorities were seeking her extradition on charges of insulting Islam for wearing a baju kurung, the traditional long sleeve outfit worn by Malay women, at a private religious ceremony that she held in 2018. This is punishable by three years in prison. So she got refugee status 
uh, from Thailand to seek asylum in Australia and was able to flee to Sydney. She has a huge social media following. She's also a devout Muslim, uh, but religious authorities regard her as a man. Uh, she misses her adopted son and daughter who are with her family in Malaysia. Uh, the crackdown is part of a sort of a weak government uh, trying to prop themselves up, where have we heard that before, by catering to religious extremists. Well, that is, that is the real pandemic. Uh, but also in Thailand, a court has rejected a lawsuit trying to legalize same-sex marriage. Uh, as in many countries, uh, the Thai court says, that's the business of the legislature. We're not going to say that uh, banning it is unconstitutional. We're going to say it's a political question and the legislature has to decide. Activists will protest on November 28th if you're in town. Yeah. Uh, but uh, same-sex marriage is going to be uh, legal and operative in Switzerland on July 1st. The government has made its announcement. They take their time there, but they're doing it. And in Chile, the Chamber of Deputies has uh, legalized same-sex marriage. It goes to the departing president for uh, signature. Which Just in time, because there's an election on December 19th, and the guy who won the first round is anti-gay. Very um, conservative. That doesn't mean he's going to win. He's up no. against a left-wing Gabriel Boric, 35, a former student leader. Yeah. But the vote was 101 to 30 in Chile. Yes, very good. Uh, a couple of uh, bad stories from Russia. Uh, in St. Petersburg, the uh, uh, in St. Petersburg, the LGBT network has been named a foreign agent by the Russian government. This means they're supposed to be uh, put out of business, but they say they're going to keep working. Well, that's an old kind of Soviet era slur that, you know, and of course now Putin is trying to uh, erase all the history of the persecution in the gulags by the communists. I mean, it's crazy over there. And then the uh, in, in Russia, uh, the government blacklisted, uh, excuse me, yes, the website of the Russian LGBTQ film festival side by side in St. Petersburg. The festival is entirely online, and apparently there's some way to get to the films, but you can't do it through the through the uh, website. Uh, the the year's event opened with Firebird, which is an award-winning Russian film that's been playing all over the world, gay film. Uh, but uh, it's you know, it's too much over there. So instead, we go to Antarctica, which celebrated its biggest polar pride. Uh, 25 people, but they <laughs> celebrated it all over Antarctica. If you go online and you look for Polar Pride, you see uh, pictures from all over Antarctica of rainbow flags, progress pride flags. Uh, it's a big thing in Antarctica. It's the coolest pride on Earth. <laughs> well, I stole that from Rex. Okay, and then the uh, then the hottest uh, pride celebration, therefore, must have been in Qatar, where uh, uh, premier race car driver Lewis Hamilton, seven-time Formula One champion, best race car driver in the world, uh, decided he was going to stand up for LGBTQ people in his, a series of races in the Middle East. So he's been wearing this rainbow helmet uh that uh is just stunning and he won the race in cutter this weekend uh wearing that helmet and he's going to wear it in the saudi arabian grand prix uh in the next uh, week or two also the helmet says we stand together and love is love uh, the, you know the world cup is going to cutter and a representative there tried to insist there is no per persecution of any sort here <laughs> Tell it to the foreign workers who are building Please. the facilities there. Not good. Uh, but uh, Hamilton became aware of discrimination. He said, you know what? I, if I'm going to go to these places, I'm going to speak up. I am not okay. going to be silent about this. Norway's Postal Service is speaking up uh, for us. Uh, they issue an extended ad each holiday season. Uh, and this year it's called When Harry Met Santa a celebration of a man's love for Santa 
Uh, this is to celebrate 50 years after same-sex relations became legal in Norway. The film charts their deepening relationship over the air, culminating in this kiss uh, on a, a Christmas Eve. It's like a four-minute video, and it shows them, you know, Santa appears one year, and they look at each other, and then he disappears, and then each year he comes back, and they sort of look at each other more and more. And then finally at the end, uh, Santa uses the Norway Postal Service and therefore has some free time to spend with his new love. If you Google Norway and when Harry met Santa, you can watch it now, but we will link to it in our weekly email, which you can sign up for by going to gayusatv.org and getting on our list. And uh, nicely, they have added uh, English subtitles, so you can even uh, know more what's going on. Okay. Uh, in Tokyo, Japan, they held their really? first trans pride march. 400 people showed up. It was quite the event. That's a great step forward for Japan. Uh, but at the same time, J.K. Rowling in <sighs> Scotland is freaking out because three, count them, three trans activists uh, showed up outside her house with signs and posted a picture, and she now feels that she's under attack and uh, the world has ended. And well, she has sent her millions of followers on these three trans demonstrators. Yeah. Uh, and they're, they've had to close down all their accounts. Uh, memo to J.K. Rowling, when you become a public figure and you make billions of dollars or whatever, people might object to some of the things you say. She has a bit of a nasty streak. Evidently. And, and here she is writing for the children. Right. Strange. Well, all right. AIDS news? Yes. We are 40 years into this pandemic, or at least our knowledge of it uh, in the United States. And uh, so World AIDS Day is coming up. It's the 30th World, annual World AIDS Day. You can find an event near you by going to worldaidsday.org backslash events. But we'll talk about some of the things that are happening. Uh, the uh, darkness, uh, the out of the darkness candlelight vigil in New York uh, will take place at the New York City AIDS Memorial, which is 7th Avenue and 12th Street at 6 p.m. and proceed to St. John's Lutheran Church on Christopher Street for a reading of names of those we've lost at 6.30 and speakers at 7 o'clock. This is organized by Brent Nicholson Earl and a bunch of organizations, including GMHC, um, but there's also going to be at the AIDS Memorial a, a long-term survivor poetry reading at 5 o'clock. There are lots of things. Go to the website worldaidsday.org to find out uh, what's happening. This is all December 1st, of course. Uh, we're a little upset that the Rockefeller Center uh, Christmas tree is being lit that day. That happened uh, some years ago, and everybody got very upset, and they promised never to do it again. But here we are. Uh, Brent Nicholson Earl, of course, is the great hero who uh, many, many years ago did the run uh, to end AIDS all around the perimeter of the United States. Just an unbelievable feat. And there's a wonderful documentary about him, which will, may be coming to a theater near you or a streaming service uh, in, in time. Uh, highly recommend that. I think um, it's playing. It, they're actually going to show it at the... Uh, SBA Theater here down the street from us, uh, maybe on World AIDS Day or shortly, uh, somewhere around there. I have already seen it at that very theater. Yeah. It's the first time I went into a movie theater since the pandemic started. Uh, uh, the 25th annual U.S. Conference on HIV AIDS opens December 2nd to 3rd. The opening plenary features Dr. Tony Fauci, Dr. Rachel uh, Levine, uh, Harold Phillips, uh, the director of the Office of National AIDS Policy, and uh, the National Minority AIDS Coalition's uh, Paul Kawaha. Uh, go to uscha.life for more information. This is not a free conference, so but it, that's where it's happening. I suspect a lot of that will be online. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, oh, yes. It is online. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, all right. Entertainment news? Well, uh, uh, Jeopardy! has its second known trans champion, a multiple winner, Amy Schneider, and she had to beat the formidable Andrew He. Uh, it's uh, 
happy note for Trans Awareness Week, um, uh, Mr. He said that uh, he, uh, he found her terrifying to play against. He didn't mean that as an insult. She's just that good. Uh, which ga And he was a multiple winner, which gave her a lot of confidence for the next couple of rounds. Uh, well, I was also happy to see that Eddie Redmayne has rethought his uh, starring role in The Danish Girl as a trans woman and thinks upon reflection that that was not a good thing to do. I wouldn't do it again, he said. Well, he it's didn't not watch nomination for it, but he won for the theory of everything where he played Stephen Hawking. Well, it's nice when people are willing to rethink their decisions and admit that uh, perhaps they did not make the best decision. Okay, Dancing with the Stars. The wow. Gays, <laughs> the gays won bronze and silver. Yeah, exactly. Cody Rigsby finished third and Jojo C was second. Jojo gave a very nice shout out to our people during the final and uh, ABC kept showing uh, when Cody was <laughs> playing, Cody's boyfriend and friends. <laughs> and the, well, let's, let's take a second to go over this. So Cody, they're doing final dances and Cody does a dance that is so gay <laughs> that it, it could How gay was it? on this show. It <laughs> was, he was voguing, he was twerking, he was, he was, he was just so gay all over the place. It was unbelievable. Uh, he, and he, it was, they said afterwards, nothing like this has ever been seen in the ballroom. And he clearly was just letting go finally and letting himself be completely free. And that was a little shocking, but nice to see, really terrific. And he, as you said, won third place out of the four final couples. And then Jojo did, uh, they each did two dances. Her final dance was to Lady Gaga's Born This Way. Uh, again, very explicit. Uh, and the gay anthem. Yeah, you know, the gay anthem and, uh, and got a perfect score as she did on her first dance too. And the judges just freaked out over, the, over this. Carrie and uh, Ann Anaba said, I look at this and I am not afraid for the future. I am so uh, inspired by this. And then Bruno, the other judge says, I wish you were around when I was a kid, you would have made it so much better for all of us. And what was great about Jojo was that she said this week and repeatedly, this has been the most important week of my life or experience of my life. I have figured out who I am. I have grown into a woman. I have uh, become so much more comfortable in who I am. And it's just all out there with her and really, really great to see. So she got second place, which was a big disappointment to almost everybody. I voted for you, Jojo. Me too, but <laughs> some of you did not, and that is why she did not win first place. Well, the basketball player won, and he was the considered basketball player Iman Shumpert uh, and the dancer Daniela Karagach. And it turns out that even though there have been plenty of football players who've won on that show, they've never had a basketball player win. So <laughs> I have to say, I was surprised with JoJo's massive uh, online following that that she didn't you know get more but well whatever they evidently were not paying enough attention to the show whatever she got uh, an enormous amount out of it and whether she got first or second and she got second uh she was clearly the breakthrough star of the entire season this will be a brief report on dave Chappelle. he's still at it making anti-lgbtq jokes and using anti-LGBTQ slurs in his routines. And that's all I'm going to say, because all he wants is attention. <laughs> well, uh, people, <laughs> someone else who wants a lot of attention and is very good at getting it is Lil Nas X. Ah. And the Grammy nominations came out this week, and he got several big nominations. So did Brandy Carlisle. Uh, so did the brothers Osborne for the song I now that is now my current favorite, Younger Me. Please, please go to YouTube and look at Younger Me by the brothers Osborne, TJ Osborne. Uh, singing about uh, his, being a closeted, afraid kid and then growing up. It's, uh, 
It's stunning. Well, again, Lil Nas, X, Lil Nas X celebrated his nomination with obscene tweets and uh, naked pictures. Well, uh, I, again, I will quote our friend Rex Wachner, who we are very grateful uh, for feeding us so much news. Uh, Lil Nas Lil Nas X's song about gay sex, Montero, Call Me By Your Name, is up for Song of the Year, Record of the Year, and Best Music Video. Uh, it's astonishing. Now, of course, lest you think uh, this means a revolution at the Grammys, uh, Kevin Hart, Dave Chappelle, and Louis C.K. were also all nominated for Grammys. So they're quite Catholic in their uh, uh, nominations. <laughs> Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, the other surprise this week is the reappearance of Jesse Smollett, uh, who you will remember a few years ago was in terrible trouble, being accused of having faked an attack on himself. Well, he's going to court on Monday about this because yeah. he's still facing these charges yes. of, of disorderly conduct. Well, and I don't know why it's disorderly conduct if you're being charged with filing a false police report. To oh, and you and I know whenever they can't think of what to charge us with, it's disorderly conduct. I certainly agree with that. Well, it turns out that as he prepares for this uh, court appearance on Monday uh, for this event in uh, 2019. 19, yeah, yeah, 2019. Uh, he has been directing a film, uh, B-Boy Blues, which is a film of the very popular 1994 novel by James Earl Hardy. Uh, they held a screen, novel. huh? A gay novel. Yes, uh, and they held a screening at the Magic Johnson Theater in New York this week. They have no distributor for it yet, but uh, James Earl Hardy is terrific, and the book was a huge hit. And now it's been turned into a movie that Jesse Smollett directed. It's uh, it's weird to have this suddenly pop up. Of course, we're not aware of everything, uh, but uh, that's what's going on with him. And I was also surprised and pleased to see that uh, Jazz Jennings has reappeared. Uh, I Am Jazz is doing a new season that's just started. Uh, she had uh, done six seasons and then, and it looked like it was the end of the series, but in fact, she's back and they've aired two episodes, which are catch up episodes of what happened in the first six years. Uh, she moved through her transition as a teenager and underwent very difficult surgery for gender confirming surgery. Uh, uh, difficult because she was on early uh, puberty blockers and that uh, interfered with her ability to have the surgery. She just didn't have enough skin uh, for that. Uh, but now they're doing season seven. And so the first episode of uh, the new material uh, is this coming Tuesday and I Am Jazz is back on the air. Right. So, uh, with five minutes left, I did hold on to a story that I was going to talk about at the beginning, and it's and it's sort of very, we, we don't talk about it enough, uh, and it's it's just the the terrible trouble we're we're in, uh, you know, in the in the country, and nothing is being done about it, you know, in terms of, of voter suppression, in terms of uh, takeover of the state legislatures, taking over election apparatuses, making us all very unhopeful. Uh, the U.S. this week was added to an annual list of backsliding democracies for the first time. Um, this group called the International IDEA um, points out to a, a visible deterioration that began in 2019. Uh, of course, you could say it began in 1789. Um, a quarter of the world lives uh, among backsliders. 70% of the world consists of backsliders, hybrid, and authoritarian states. So we don't want to be a part of that, folks. Well, we, we, we don't. Some people do, and that's yes, the problem. And that is very dispiriting. Yes. Um, uh, there was at least a patina of, of, of you know, uh, appealing to democracy and rights and all that other kind of stuff. And it's gone uh, from our going from our discourse. And it's not and we can't win just by describing what's going on. We have to fight and we're not doing it.
And I, you know, as I watch the news, as I am wont to do, doing this show, uh, you hear a lot of dire predictions of uh, coming violence and that these uh, pockets of Proud Boys and Oath Keepers and everybody else, as we look at the January 6th insurrection or Charlottesville or whatever, are only growing and are only more emboldened by things like the uh, Rittenhouse uh, verdict. And that uh, we, we have a lot in front of us that is not good. So the question is always, how much? How, how many of us want a democracy and freedom and peace to continue? And how many don't and want a violent overthrow of all those uh, uh, qualities? And it's, uh, it's, it's hard to tell where the balance lies and, and how many there are on each side. And we do want you to all have a happy holiday season, but uh, these are things that we must turn over in our hearts and um, get active about, very active, uh, if we're gonna turn them around. I mean, the, the, you know, the number one thing that the Congress could do, of course, is pass the John Lewis Act, uh, which would maybe uh, stop these state legislatures from uh, suppressing elections, but they're not doing it. I have a story that will contradict everything I've just said. Okay. <laughs> I went to the memorial service for Elaine Romagnoli this weekend uh, at the Stonewall Inn. The uh, the restaurateur, the uh, uh, Elaine who created Bonnie and Clyde's and the Cubby Hole and a lot of other lesbian bars and restaurants. And it was a great gathering of scores of her friends and employees and uh, activists and uh, a whole crowd. And people got up and told stories, people who'd known her. And one woman got up and she said, one night in the 70s, I went to Bonnie's late at night to meet up with Elaine and, and uh, you know, have a drink with her and drive her home. And I, there wasn't a lot of parking down there on West Third Street. And I parked in the driveway of a motorcycle repair shop because it was two o'clock in the morning. There was no one around. Well, we come out of Bonnie's and my four tires are slashed. They're, they're all flat. Clearly the motorcycle crowd were angry at having a gay bar on their block and having someone park in their driveway. So I went to the uh, trunk of my car and I took out a crowbar and I smashed every window <laughs> in the motorcycle place. <laughs> Don't try this at home, kids. It was hilarious. <laughs> that was the 70s. And Man, it's good to see you laugh. <laughs> Uh, we really appreciate you all being with us. We hope to, well, look, we always have a mixture of good news and bad news. There are terrific things happening, uh, and uh, they give us hope uh, here and around the world. The fighting back over the books is making me very happy. But uh, good, as Andy says, good news and bad news, and we bring it to you every week here, and we will be back next week with more. Thanks for being with us.